G'day Transcetters, I'm Jom with Gravel Cyclist coming to you today with another wheel set review. This time around it's the Zip 303S tubeless carbon disc brake wheel set. So these wheel boxes are quite understated, but that's nothing like Zip's history. From 1988, when they released their first product, a carbon fiber disc wheel, they've gone on to produce products such as a tri-spoke, crank sets, deep section rims, even frames, and obviously now the latest version of the 303, which was released originally back in 1999. Zip's products have always been cutting edge, especially in the area of aerodynamics. They've never been afraid to take risks. So without further delay, let's unbox these beauties and see how they look. One Zip 303S rear wheel. One Zip 3 O three S front wheel. Also notice the sharp new logos on these wheels. Okay, let's cover the tech specs. So here be the rear wheel and it's a carbon rim as always. It's 45 millimeters deep, 27 millimeters outside to outside and 23 millimeters internally. I'll confirm that in a moment with my handy calipers. And the cassette body drivers available are SRAM XDR, which is fitted right now, or Shimano 10 and 11 speed. I incidentally have one of those cassette bodies as well because this pair of wheels will be going between several bikes. There are 24 spokes on the rear wheel, and I believe they are SAPIM CX rays. So you want to have the listen to this cassette body, I know you do. Let's get it going nice. There's a free will action. I'm pretty certain the nipples are going to be brass on this wheel set, is my guess. If I've got that wrong, I will correct. And right here, you can just get a nice close up there of the rims. And Zip does have recommended tire pressure on these rims available on their website, which I'll link in the description below. Okay, let's get the front wheel. And here's the front wheel. 24 spokes again, just like the rear wheel. And I didn't mention this a moment ago. Both wheels are set up for through axle. The rear is 12 by 142 millimeter. The front right now is set up for 12 by 100 millimeter. But Zip kindly sent me 15 millimeter end cap so I can run this wheel set with virtually any bike. That's fantastic. I think it's a pretty good looking wheel set and it's very well priced. And you might notice center lock for the mounting standard, which is a bit of a departure for Zip. But great to see, especially if you swap wheels as regularly as I do. And you might notice the rims are pre-taped, which I love, saves a bunch of mess in about. And Zip also includes lock rings for the disc brake rotors and very long valves because these rims are 45 millimeters deep. So that's very handy. Time to measure the rims. There you go, bang on, 23 millimeters internally. Let's measure the external. Oh yeah, they're on spec, fantastic. And just finally, let's measure the depth. There you go, bang on spec again, 45 millimeters deep. Okay, you know what's next, right? We're all waiting to see how much they really weigh. So let's get them onto the grand scale. The rear wheel goes on first. The handy gravel cycler scale says, let's make sure it's in focus and you can see it, 829 grams. And here's the front wheel and don't forget these weights include the rim tape. You're looking at 700 and 18 grams. So that makes a total of 1,547 grams. So that's the tech specs covered. How do tires mount onto the Zip 303S tubeless disc wheel sets? Here comes the fun part, mounting the tires, which might fail spectacularly. I've got a Panerasia Gravel King SK 700C by 35, and I've got a WTB Resolute 700C by 42. Both tires are used, so they're a little bit floppy and sloppy. See how it goes. I'm going to use my Bond Traeger TLR flash charger pump and my Topeak Joe Blow booster pump. There's no compressor. Both pumps have been reviewed on the Gravel Cyclist website. I'll link those in the description below. 
And some guys said to me, hey, why do you take the valve cores out to do the inflation unit? You don't have to. Well, guess what? I'm using pumps, not compressors. Compressors force a lot more air. And this is uh, a much more interesting way of inflating these tires, I think. So I'm gonna use my method, whatever works. It hasn't popped into the bead yet, it's close. Oh, it's almost there. Yeah, it's going, beauty. If it doesn't roll away, just running to help her. Yeah, good. And here it's going into the bead. Okay, folks, I had to swap the Panarese Gravel King tires because the first one was too floppy and sloppy. Really old tire. It would definitely melt with a compressor, but I don't have one of those. In fact, I don't want for much, but if someone wants to gift me a lovely compressor with Presta adapter, that would be amazing. Okay, enough begging. Let's hope this one inflates. I've got the old cylinder loaded up with a about 150 psi of air. Here we go. And this is, by the way, Panares Gravel King SK Plus in 700C by 38 millimeters. Okay, this one's gone better. There you go, it's popping onto the bees perfectly. So, I would say that tires are quite pardon the pileated woodpecker then, I would say that tyres are quite easy to mount onto the Zip303S tubeless disc brake wheel set. That's the tyre mounting covered. How do they ride? Weighing mid 1500 grams, the Zip303S wheels are not in the spectrum of super light, but they are lightweight and weigh less than many carbon rimmed wheels rebadged from the same factory that typically cost more but without the heftier price tag. Additionally, the zip wheels use the popular J-Bend spoke standard and external nipples. Whilst the wheel set is pretty well logoed up, they are on the subtle side, light gray against the black carbon rims. The wheel set is flexible in that you can run 28 millimeter roadie tires up to 50 millimeter wide gravel tires. I reviewed the wheel set with Panarese Gravel King SS in 35 millimeter and Gravel King SK in 35 millimeter and 38 millimeter. Aerodynamically, these wheels are optimized for 28 millimeter tires, but in gravel mode, they behave like a deeper rim. You will feel movement from strong side or cross winds, but overall, these wheels are quite stable in most conditions. The aero benefits are diminished with a wider tire, which helps exacerbate what I call the sail effect. But if you believe in placebo, these sharp looking wheels will empower the mental feeling of speed, which could translate to perceived speed during your gravel ride or race. The Zip 303S wheels spin up the speed nicely, and that speed is easy to maintain with these wheels. The wheels are stiff but comfortable, provided you have your tire pressure set appropriately for body weight. There's no lateral movement should you thrash the bike out of the saddle, or if you stay planted in the saddle and really torque the wheel set. Free wheel engagement of 10 degrees is fast enough for gravel use, and if you need to swap cassette bodies for another drivetrain system, the tool-free design makes it a snap. The Zip 76 176 hubs are still nice and smooth, and there is no lateral play in the bearings once the wheel is installed. The wheel set is very durable and round and true as the day I received it. I've ridden these wheels in Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia, Mississippi and Florida through all manner of conditions, meaning plenty of good and bad mixed surface roads. These wheels are very well made and the build is stout. I don't know if there's a recommended rider weight limit, but I could see them working very well for a strong rider with a heavier build. There's plenty of good with this wheel set, but there's also a little bad. There's a couple of problems I've run into with the 303S wheels, namely when I had to install a new pair of tires after I had a tubeless foul mishap. And you can see more about that particular mishap linked in the description below. Cut a long story short, I had no luck inflating these Panarese Gravel King SKs or WTB Resolutes or any tire for that matter, onto these rims after I had that tubeless fail. 
I used a compressor. In fact, I tried two different compressors. Ultimately, it came down to installing a second layer of tape. Once I installed the layer of tape, I was able to inflate these tires using the Bontrager TLR flash charger pump. So keep that in mind, you might want to install a second layer of tape on top of what comes from the factory provided by Zip. The other issue with this wheel set is the cassette body in that it's very simple to swap. Now that sounds like a great problem to have, it really is. But unfortunately, if you're in a situation where I had, where I was by the side of the road with my tubeless fail, like I mentioned earlier, and basically I was banging this wheel onto the ground trying to get tubeless sealant out of the tire so I could install a tube, well, the whole cassette and body came flying off and fell into the dirt and a couple of the poles, there are three poles in total inside this hub, fell onto the ground. So thankfully I have enough knowledge of wheels to realize what had happened, but if you're not experienced mechanically with a wheel set like this, or any wheel set for that matter, you might then be stuck. Those issues aside, the Zip 303S is a pretty nice wheel set. It is light for what it is, a deep section carbon wheel set and it works with a huge variety of tubeless tires wide and not so wide you receive an excellent lifetime warranty supported by a large brand there are no proprietary parts in this wheel set it's rock solid and i cannot think of a reason why you would not buy these wheels especially when you see the price one thousand three hundred dollars us for carbon wheels that beat the pants off wheels costing far more and they're a sharp looking wheel set complemented by zips new logo. Wheel sets are the number one way to improve performance of any bicycle and Zip have really outdone themselves with the Zip 303S. So that wraps up the review of the Zip 303S tubeless disc brake wheel set. I realize nowadays there's a plethora of wheel set options available for your gravel bike. So I hope that my review went some way in helping you make an informed purchase decision. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear on the channel. I'll see you in the next video.